This evening, AFC ministers defend sedition clause. Several persons demand compensation after a drunk driver plowed through their homes. Government employees learn to spot corruption in the region. Two arrested for a Trinidadian cocaine shipment to India. And internationally, bridge collapse in Kashmir kills seven. From Safety V Headquarters in South Rival Gardens, this is Safety V Headline News with George Gonzalez. Today is Monday, May the 14th, 2018, and this edition of Headline News is now being streamed live on our Facebook page, as well as our YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us. The Guyana Prison Service is currently probing how several inmates of the New Amsterdam prison were able to obtain contraband items. The photos of the prisoners were shared on Sunday on the Facebook page of 34-year-old Abdul Andre Azimula, who is on remand for the murder of Danian Jagdio. The photos depict what appears to be a party inside the prison complete with bottles of expensive alcohol, cannabis, and cell phones. In addition to the photos, Azimula reportedly went to on to post, Big Up All the Mother's Day, seemingly in honor of Mother's Day. The State Assets Recovery Agency is addressing corruption through education. This morning, the government employees benefited from anti-corruption training. One of the greatest deterrents to Guyana's development is corruption. It takes many forms, but the best known form is the unlawful conversion of state assets by government employees. The State Assets Recovery Agency is tasked with addressing this by recovering money, gold, property, and other assets illegally taken from the state. While the agency is well equipped to tackle the issue, they cannot do it alone. Corruption has become a culture in Guyana, a very expensive one. With this in mind, this morning, SARA and the Financial Intelligence Unit began an anti-corruption workshop. The program is intended to educate the staff of the Guyana Revenue Authority, the Guyana Police Force, and other key government agencies on corrupt practices. One way to address this is to enforce laws already on the books. This enforcement is especially important given the recent shift in Western nations' foreign policy. The rich countries are no longer prepared to spend their hard-earned cash, their citizens' money, on terrible countries that seem to be unconcerned with the level of pilfering and corruption. In fighting corruption, it is imperative that the staff of the nation's regulatory agencies are able to identify it and its many forms. Through public sensitization, SARA hopes to make persons more aware of the impact corruption has on the nation as a whole. Also on the topic of corruption, SARA and the FIU signed a Memorandum of Understanding this morning. In this report, Wendell Jeffrey tells us that the MOU is intended to facilitate information sharing between the two agencies. She can recover all that we can recover. Do you so have any idea what you're looking at? It, it could be an expanding amount of money. It's not a finite amount of money. People thief it every day. So we don't, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what the end is going to be. But we are pursuing a misappropriation of assets. George, today a very important piece of legislation was signed. It was a memorandum, a memorandum of understanding. We are mandated, I think, both by international law convention as well as domestic law to cooperate because both of us share the same set of goals and these relate to a reduction 
of corruption, both as a national good and as an international obligation. Speaking today at the press conference, Professor Clive Thomas says that they are looking at bringing charges in the third quarter of this year. Our target at this point in time is to bring cases to the court in the third quarter of this year which means after the end of June. He said also that they have a bunch of new recommendations that just came in today that they are continuing to investigate. We are working hand in hand with them to recover some state assets, which we have reason to believe have been unlawfully removed from the state of Ghana and might reside not only in Ghana, but outside of Ghana. We've only very recently received some, um, I'd say like a few minutes ago, some of these recommendations on the police legal advice. And we are bound and responsible by this recommendation to pursue them. And we are, and are committed to pursuing each and every one of them. The professor also stated that there is a distinction between civil recovery and criminal recovery, and he explained the difference. My primary responsibility is to ensure that through civil proceedings, resources that are returned to Ghana if they be unlawfully misappropriated. His responsibilities are largely civil as well as criminal, and therefore so too is really the criminal arm of their value. The MOU would allow for a formal mechanism so that they can enact um, the policies and bridge the gaps legally between the two entities. At this point in time, the number of criminal proceedings that have been undertaken, but we also have as our target civil proceedings against the same, sometimes the same set of forces and sometimes not. But we will have to give precedence to that because crime takes precedence. George, I asked the members of the head table if there was any kind of amnesty that will be offered to those who might find themselves um, invest, being investigated by these agencies, and this is what um, how they answer the question. Under our act, I have the discretion of pursuing cases seeking a settlement if, this, if the conditions are appropriate. Thanks, Wendell. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the murder of 34-year-old vendor Farsi Yassin of 25 Belmonte Mahaika, East Coast Demerara. His body, which bore multiple stab wounds, was found in a northern drain in his yard about 1.45 this morning. The body is presently at the Lycan Funeral Home awaiting a post-mortem examination. No arrests have been made at this time. An accident on the Suzdike Linden Highway on Sunday has left one dead and 23 injured. The driver of a car heading east reportedly lost control and crashed into a minibus which was traveling west. The accident occurred near Kuru Kururu around 5.35 p.m. At least one child is feared dead after being hospitalized due to internal injuries sustained on during the crash. Don't go away. Coming up after the break, several persons demand compensation after a drunk driver plowed through their homes. But first, here's today's foreign currency exchange rate. For the latest in news from Guyana, the region, and beyond, visit our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. It's always fresh, tasty, enticing, and the best in town. Serve hot from our experienced chefs. Come and enjoy our daily meals with a wide and delicious menu to choose from. Also, a wide variety of pastries and dessert. 
We can also host your luncheons, cocktails, parties and formal gathering. For reservation call 225-1730-225-0038 and delivery 225-0195 or 225-0159. The new thriving Chinese restaurant, 32 Main Street, Georgetown. For all your floor covering needs, Kisoon's has you covered from all to all carpets, runners, rugs in all sizes and designs, mats for all entranceways, vinyl and rubber tiles too. And with our vast stock and knowledge, you're guaranteed to find your floor covering solution with us. We provide free estimates and did I mention we install too? Like I said, we've got you covered. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Mom, what are you doing with GPL on your list? Child, you forgot I have to pay GPL. You got time with GPL. I have to keep these lights on. The customers who think in that manner and refuse to honor their obligation to GPL are obviously not playing their part in ensuring quality service delivery. So, I will continue to pay my GPL bill on time every time i recognize the value of your point mom you were right welcome back an employee of the guyana power and light incorporated is now hospitalized after being shocked by a live electric wire he came into contact with the wire while performing repair work on an electrical pole in the vicinity of Stabrook Market. The worker, whose name has yet to be released, was a part of a crew that was called in to repair a set of electric wires that were downed after a tree in the compound of St. Andrew's Kirk fell onto them. The damage left sections of the wires and poles in need of immediate replacement. The worker received the shock while handling one of the damaged wires. Eyewitnesses claim that the shock threw the man from the pole and onto the ground. The same live wire fell onto the worker as he was on the ground, causing him to receive an additional shock. He is currently undergoing treatment at the Georgetown Public Hospital. His condition is currently unknown. The actions of one drunk driver has caused massive headaches for several residents in Pudroin. Esther Sobers tells us that the persons are now demanding action and not excuses regarding compensation. Over three weeks ago, Keith Redmond of Bogusville, West Bank Damarara, was killed by a drunk driver. Redmond was riding his bicycle home shortly after 5 a.m. when he met his demise. Rondel Mark da Costa not only killed Redmond, but he also caused damage to the property of several Port Run residents. They are frustrated as they are only receiving excuses from the driver's family. I spoke to the brother and my grandson, and I meet the brother Sunday again, and they say they um, have the money there in Brazil in um, Mark da Costa's name, and he can't get the brother over, over Brazil, can't get the money for come down for doing repairs. Maya said that the Custis family had removed the damaged car from her premises. They nailed pieces of wood on the beam that was broken and made promises to return to make proper fixtures along with repairing the gate. How long more we go with? Look, me condition and me place. How I feel in shame for come out. So because, right, you tell you got a good gate, but what for me got forget a piece of zinc. One vendor who stood Stall was also damaged by the accident had done her own repair work as she was losing money every day as she wasn't vending. However, she still wants to be compensated $30,000 for the cost of repairing her stall. It's really hard for me because I gotta, I gotta take my train and them to school and at the end point of my own I have to go with family and ask them for help with some money to, to build back this stand because nobody is coming for, for doing not, nothing. And it's, huh? Yes, it's two weeks now since I sell out there, eh? and it, it wasn't easy. It was real rough. I have three children to send to school every day. I got, I got to be borrowing money from people for, for sending to school. The Costa has since been released on 400,000 bail and is expected to make his second court appearance on June 4th. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. 
Channel 2 reached out to the DaCosta family, who claims that they have been in constant contact with the Pudroin residents. Nonetheless, one of the relatives claims that Redman was the first person who was ever killed by DaCosta. On Sunday morning, the body of a Surinamese police officer was found dead in his Toyota Prado in front of a technical institute in Paramaribo. Officer Premcharan Rakvikant was reportedly kidnapped by a gang of Guyanese fishermen operating in Suriname. It is reported that the gang believed that he might have leaked information to his superiors about an illegal gun racket. A passerby contacted the police after seeing Ravikant's body in the vehicle. It is alleged that Ravikant may have provided one of the guns used in last month's piracy attack offshore Suriname. Since the discovery, a 30-year-old Guyanese reportedly confessed to the murder of the officer. Several AFC government ministers have come out in support of the contentious sedition clause of the proposed cybercrimes bill. Here's Wendell Jeffrey with more. And that is why we were the Minister of Public Security, Kemra Dranjatan, said that the AFC supports the retention of the sedition clause in the cybercrime bill, notwithstanding the concerns of some of the AFC's leaders. We have a decision whereby the formulation of certain words in Section 18.1 has given rise to some concerns by members of our leadership. Of course, the concerns now coming means that we'll have to take a second look at that wording. According to the dictionary, sedition is defined as any conduct or speech that incites people to rebel against the authority of the state. Speaking on behalf of the PP, opposition leader Barajak Dio registered his opposition to the bill, especially the sedition clause. However, Last Friday, the AFC threw their collective weight behind the controversial sedition clause. They claimed that it gives the government the powers it needs to prosecute people who use the internet to attack the government or otherwise cause mischief. As I have said before, sedition is a good a tool to have in, a, in an executive branch because sedition, as you know, is a an offense that goes to the heart of civil strife in your country and people publishing letters and all of that to ensure that there is civil disorder. Supposing we do have certain things happening in the border areas and people doing some rogue elements, they're doing a, a kind of annexation for by possession and they start saying a lot of things and they're putting it up on the press and the internet and the Facebook and so on. I don't have a charge if I abolish this thing. According to Minister Ranjitan, Except the entire criminal offensive act is revamped, that clause is all the government has to stave off any kind of malicious attack against the government. You're covered in England by, because they passed another legislation that was more recent, I think 1989 or 1998, whereby the Civil Disorder Bill takes care of what sedition would have been normally in, 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 in the context of um, what we're talking about here. But unless we want to now do a major overhaul of our Criminal Offenses Act, like the, 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 the English people did, and then they abolished sedition, well, fine. But as presently advised, and I am leading the charge in relation to maintaining it in our books for a very good reason. The AFC leader was very adamant that the law, as controversial as it might be, does not in any way stymie attempts of individuals or groups in seeking to change the government. We also have a paragraph 4, 18.4b, that says criticism of the government, criticism of any minister, criticism and even wanting to lawfully change the government does not constitute the offense of sedition. And For Channel 2 Headline News, like that, Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. On Friday, the Department of Public Information alerted residents in Barima Waini, Region 1, that the Port Kaituma River has been compromised by mining operations in the area. 
Since the discovery, Guyana Water Incorporated has shut down the pumps that draw water from the river. The pumping station is the primary source of water for residents of Port Kaituma and surrounding environs. GWI will recommence pumping water from the river as soon as they are given the approval from the Water Quality Department. Meanwhile, GWI is providing potable water for residents at the Port Kaituma pump station until the water quality improves. Coming up after the break. Two arrested for a Trinidadian cocaine shipment to India. And bridge collapse in Kashmir kills seven. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5494. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always it's ride taxi service. Let's go. The Ministry of Public Health presents Health Expo 2018 under the theme Reaching for a Better Life with Good Health. Starting Wednesday, May 30th to Saturday, June 2nd at the Sophia Exhibition Center. Catch the big opening night ceremony on Wednesday 30th from 17 hours and gates open from 15 hours to 22 hours daily except on Friday, June 1st at 10 a.m. for school children. Enjoy free medical and dental checkups, blood pressure and diabetes testing, nutrition counseling and many more. Admission is absolutely free and the entire we family is invited. Don't miss out. Welcome back. Here's Bibi Backus with our regional and international headlines of the day. A fugitive on Jamaica's most wanted list was reportedly apprehended in Antigua after arriving on a flight at the VC Bird International Airport on Friday. He had been identified as 23-year-old Fitzroy Andre Corr, also known as Bees, of Maypin, Clarendon. He is reportedly wanted in Jamaica for a number of major offenses. The Antiguan media reports that Corr was apprehended during a joint operation between police and immigration officials at the airport. A 46-year-old woman and her 25-year-old daughter have been arrested in India for smuggling cocaine from Trinidad and Tobago through the Indian postal system. The two were arrested after officers, following a tip-off, intercepted the Gobang package in Nagpur. According to Indian media reports, the 46-year-old woman was arrested in Nagpur receiving the parcel, while her daughter was held in Goa. The drugs were concealed in eyeshadow pallets. And in international news, Tens of thousands of workers and their families gathered in London to demand higher wages and better working conditions in the public and private sectors as part of a march organized by the trade unions. The A New Deal for the Working Class March organized by the Trade Union Congress made its way from Victoria Embarkment to Hyde Park on Saturday. In the West End Park, there were speeches by union leaders and politicians, including the head of the opposition Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn. And finally, at least seven medical students drowned and nine others missing as a wooden bridge on the river in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir collapsed while the students were taking pictures on it. Around 25 students were taking pictures on a bridge in Neelam Valley when it collapsed. According to officials, the temporarily erected hanging bridge could not withstand the load of people standing on it and it came down, tumbling the visitors down into the stream. Reporting for Channel 2 Headline News, Bibi Bacchus. Thanks, Bibi. Now for your seven-day weather forecast and bridge retraction schedule.
And that's Channel 2 Headline News for this Monday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. You can also tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 for a rebroadcast and Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock for more news. For now, I'm George Gonzalez, signing out from this newscast, saying thank you for welcoming us into your homes, and do have... Ministry of Public Health presents Health, health Expo, Expo 2018, 2018 under the theme Reaching for reaching a Better for life, life with Good Health. Starting Wednesday, May 30th to Saturday, June 2nd at the Sophia Exhibition Center. Catch the big opening night ceremony on Wednesday 30th from 17 hours and gates open from 15 hours to 22 hours daily except on Friday, June 1st at 10 a.m. for school children. Enjoy free medical and dental checkups, blood pressure and diabetes testing, nutrition counseling and many more. Admission is absolutely free and the entire Family is invited. Don't miss out.